All right, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. My name is Pete Berube. I'm chairperson of the Millis Finance Committee. Tonight is Wednesday, August 30th. Um, this is, we haven't met since sometime in July, and the pace of meetings will start to pick up uh, in the coming weeks and month, uh, months as we approach Fall Town Meeting. Um, just a, a note that there is a tri-board meeting of the school committee, the select board, and the finance committee scheduled for next week, um, next Wednesday night, the 6th of September. Um, the meeting is posted. I don't remember exactly which, meet, which room we're in. Uh, meeting will be at least recorded, probably televised, but all of that stuff will be on the, not the official notification, which uh, the town administrator's office and or Deirdre will put out. So if you're interested in that, um, for, for the viewing audience, um, please uh, just check the town website for details. And Mike, could you possibly, I'm not sure if that's on this computer here in front of us, could you just check that off? We're having, we have a notice on our computer here for Zoom that maybe there's an issue with the audio devices, so. Uh, cancel it. Deidre, can you hear us? No? Maybe there is an issue. How about press get started? Deidre, can you go. hear us? No, here he is. Okay. So it looks like our mics are not connected. Bear with, us, bear with us, folks. Can you hear us now, Deirdre? Yeah. Deirdre, can you hear us? No, it came up. We the microphone has an explanation. It's possible we point. can't hear her, but she can hear us. It's possible. Please raise your hand if you can hear us. How about that? Deirdre? We can hear you, yes. Can you hear us? Okay. Yes. So Great. the tri board meeting is um, posted um, to be in room two two nine. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else? You kind of trailed off. I wasn't sure if there was more to more that you wanted to add. Yep, I'll have, we'll have topics for you uh, tomorrow. Okay, great. Okay, um, so with that said, I'm just gonna ask that the committee um, introduce themselves, starting with Ms. McGinnis. Kathy McGinnis. Sarah Reyes. Joyce Boyardi. John Lohr. Peter Underhill. Mike Crone. Jen Zaretsky. Great, thank you very much. Okay, we'll get started. We're gonna um, have some discussion on the Tri-County Vocational High School construction project. Um, we did discuss this a little bit last month. Um, our discussion centered around um, essentially whether or not the finance committee would take a position on this in advance of the uh, referendum or the, the vote that's coming uh, in October. Um, I have done a little bit of research um, and have found that bylaws, home charter, and our own policies and procedures are fairly specific in the sense that this is an advisory committee um, that is uh, it, it, most of the language is specific to the committee providing advice on specific to town meeting and warrant articles. Um, there is no other place that I can find that defines roles of providing advice on referendum or other town issues. It doesn't say that we can't, it just doesn't explicitly say that we can. Um, so. 
I wanted to ask the um, town administrator for some opinion on that and if you've had any experience with this particular issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, based on my experience, I, I would say that the Finance Committee does have a role. Um, you do have a, a ballot question um, that will be put before the voters that will most certainly have financial implications for the community as to whether it, you know, it passes or not. Um, and Millis is one of only 11 communities that will be voicing its opinion uh, on this project um, and will be affected by the overall results of this district-wide election. So I think it certainly is within the purview of the Finance Committee to make a recommendation based on my knowledge and experience. Um, and if this were to pass, um, the town would need to find a funding source um, for this project. So uh, I would say um, in light of that that the Finance Committee does have certainly, or a strong argument could be made that the Finance Committee has a role, um, certainly as far as the financial implications for the community. Okay. Um, I'm happy to have other opinions or I really wanted to bring that part of it up prior to having the actual discussion on it to make sure that we are on solid ground. Um, I didn't hear that we, and we still will have that conversation because even if we vote on an opinion tonight, there still will be the issuance of, in my opinion, there should be some issuance of some sort of letter, um, more than just these meeting proceedings so that if we were to vote to have an opinion, um, that there's a way to, to broadcast that or publish it, um, obviously in advance of um, the vote or the ballot. Um, so I want to keep going with that. And you had mentioned the fiscal part of it. So um, just real quick, um, I think the select board, if you would go maybe a step further on, on there's the select board has deliberated this or discussed this. And there is, as I understand it, and correct me where I'm wrong, please, uh, that the select board is also considering adding a separate ballot um, item for the same day um, on whether or not, and, and I won't even, please go into a little bit more detail in that way sure. people hear it um, once and accurately. Certainly in light of the fact that this is a uh, proposed $280 million project where upwards of $200 million dollars of that project would be um, paid for directly by the voters of the district. Um, the select board um, most likely will be discussing this at least at, at the tri-board meeting um, next week and will be, I'd expect, deliberating at their meeting, um, the next regular meeting on September 14th. It's a special night, Thursday night, due to some scheduling issues. They'll be discussing um, whether or not um, they should have a second ballot on that day, on October 24th, that would contain a, a debt exclusion um, for consideration of the voters. Um, really, there's a lot of reasons to consider that. First and foremost, I think you know some importance needs to be given to the fact that the same voters that are voting on whether or not to commit the town to this project should also um, be voicing some direction to the town on how to, that'll be funded. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, if you wait to a later date, it, it could be a totally different set of voters with different viewpoints that will be coming out for that same vote. Um, the board has not taken a formal position for or against um, the project, but has expressed concerns about the funding of the project. So, um, by law, we cannot um, have a change the wording of the ballot question from Tri-County. We cannot even add a question onto the same ballot. We actually have to have a separate ballot. But there's nothing prohibiting the town from having a, a second ballot on the same day of the election so voters don't have to come out a second time. They could come into the polls, receive both ballots, vote on both, and they're not committed to vote yes on you know, both or no on both, they can vote either way. Um, but uh, 
Uh, this was discussed as well um, by a number of the town administrators and managers. And th this is, other towns are looking at this, whether it be a vote on the actual same day, October 24th, or a vote soon afterwards. Some towns, it's just, they, they say from a practical standpoint, they wouldn't be able to get the vote together in time. Um, I have spoken to our town clerk's uh, uh, office and the staff there feel that we do have time to do it if it's something that um, the board feels is the best interest of the community. Okay. I'm glad that's happening. Um, any questions or comments for Mr. Gazinski? I do. Oh, go ahead. I mean, Mr. Crum. I understand your position in trying to discuss, you know, whether or not this board should have discussions regarding the finances of this particular project. I agree. I think this board is going to have to have discussions if this passes as to what's going to happen with respect to uh, prior uh, uh, subsequent budgets. Um, however, really the finances of this are the purview of the selectmen, yourself, and the, uh, the uh, finance uh, uh, manager of the town. Um, it really doesn't fall to us. We have not been a party to the discussions that must have gone on over the last two and a half years about this project. To come in at last minute and to look at a few numbers on 10 or 17 pages and then make a recommendation, which carries a lot of weight in the town. As you know, town meeting generally votes 95% of the time the way that the FinCon votes. And I think that that's a reason why I would say I disagree with the concept of having this board make a recommendation on the project. I think that Peter was right in his analysis. In my past experience on FinCom boards, I've never seen a FinCom make recommendations on things of this nature. We've certainly discussed them. We've had a lot of discussions about them. Um, but we vote on warrant articles. We are, in essence, a warrant committee. Um, or anything coming before town meeting, which generally is a warrant. So that, that would be my objection to it, Mr. Chair. Mr. Okay. Chair, if I may, and not, sure. not, not to argue back or forth, I think there's some good points, and the Finance Committee is certainly not required to take a position on it by any stretch. Um, I would say that's a good point that the, the Tri-County um, Regional has been working on this a number of years, but other than one meeting where um, representatives of Tri-County came before the select board back in the spring, there really hasn't been a lot of back and forth. So it's not like the select board has been seriously involved with a lot of back and forth, and it's just new to the finance committee. I mean, it was fairly new to the select board as of this spring. Um, and uh, I know I attended an informational meeting over the summer. I know uh, at least one of your members was there. Um, and. You know, we did get a, a lot of additional information and there was a lot of questions and concerns, not so much about why there's a need, um, but the process. And again, I go back to the point that, and I may have mentioned this before, but the law that establishes the system for these types of projects and the approval of them was put into place prior to Proposition 2 and a half. So it did not take into consideration the impacts of that because simply back then when this was put into effect all it would have taken was a town meeting vote to approve this project now it takes a debt exclusion vote at a ballot that's a much larger hurdle and um, certainly there's a concern that if this gets approved and there's no funding source it's true that the impacts of this won't hit the town for about three years but that would be like a train coming down the tracks at us unless we have a system set up to fund it. I mean, the estimates for the annual cost, depending on enrollment, could be anywhere from 400000 to 800000 a year, the impact to the town. So it's, it's a large impact. Without an override, there's no question it'll have operational impacts to other sectors of municipal and school government here in town. I agree with you. If I may continue. Please. I agree with, with, please I agree. with the mic. I agree with you. However, having the FinCom do analysis along with your group, the finance, you know, the finance manager and the selectmen in making known to the public what the financial impacts of this would be, ballot question, no, no vote on the ballot question, whatever. I agree. 
that's very different from making a recommendation, yay or nay, on the project itself. And that was my objection. Fair enough. Okay. I would just add that um, following the same line of conversation, that one of the one of the issues that people have raised, including the select board, is, is, and we've kind of gotten by it in the sense that we've given up on the argument, is that the process is flawed. It's not like it's different than a vocational uh, technical high school project within MSBA is different than every other MSBA project where it is extensively discussed and the town bodies are part of the process. Um, in which case the FinCom would be involved. Um, and it's not, my heartache is not just that the, Vin, the FinCom is not involved. There's a lot of other steps. I, I'm not trying to, you know, although as you stated, there is, people do put some level of trust in a, in a FinCom opinion. Um, the fact that that process has legally been circumvented, um, you know, leaves us with the, this discussion to be had. And then I would just caution you and, and, and anyone reading into my initial question to Mr. Gazinski on my opinion on this. Um, I just want to make sure that we're on legal or, or sound ground. Um, I haven't voiced an opinion on this one way or the, or the other. So uh, any, any more questions or comments, Mr. Lohr? I just have a couple uh, comments and questions. <clears throat> Is there any way to put together an informational meeting for the residents of Millis to help them make a more informed decision. I think um, you know we're learning it as we go along right now, as well as uh, uh, the debt exclusion. And I think you know if I was to guess, the majority of the residents won't know which way to vote and what that impact is based on their decisions. And then my second question is, have you talked to other towns? And what are other towns doing, and what's the sense in those towns? Well, on the first question, I would say that that's an excellent question. I think it's it's a should be a topic of discussion for the tri board meeting next week. Um, I can't speak for the select board. I can only say some of the different comments and concerns that I've heard. I think there would be, you know, I would presume to be a willingness to try to have an informational meeting prior to any th to October twenty fourth. Um, but I think that should definitely should be a topic of discussion for next week. Um, and speaking with the other communities, I don't I don't want to name them one by one sure. because they, they weren't uh, they weren't speaking for their boards as well. But some some of the towns, the impact is much lower than ours. It might only be fifty thousand dollars a year, so they, they weren't going to have a debt exclusion for fifty thousand dollars. The the some of the other communities, they felt it was they've already set up their elections. Um, and they felt it was too late for them to make that switch. And because of the processes they have in their community, they thought it was just too much. Um, and I know one or other, at least one or two other towns were seriously considering holding um, the, the separate ballot with a debt exclusion the same day. Um, so it was, it was a mixed bag, definitely. Um, and, uh, you know, every town's a little different. That, that's the thing. It, it, I would be shocked if every town was doing the same thing because if you look, we have a mishmash of different types of communities um, and they'll, they'll all have different reactions to this. But they all did share, certainly the ones that have a large enrollment, they all did share uh, one theme was just a concern about the cost and how that was going to be handled. And it is hard to know where the towns are going to be financially three years from now. Um, and, and that's a tough one. And, if the debt exclusion passed, but the overall project failed, debt exclusion would have no force and effect because there'd be no project. So it was no harm, no foul, whether it passed or failed. But um, I think there, you know, the thought process again being that, you know, the folks that are coming to vote yay or nay on this project should have an understanding, some understanding of what the financial impacts could probably be for the town. Although that, a lot of that will be unknown because it's based on the enrollment. It won't year it, by year, right? And and just to amplify that a little bit, there have been numbers discussed um, based on current enrollment. You, you know, I don't think it's totally unknown. I think what it a better a range. term it, it fluctuates based on enrollment. With Thirty-seven students last year. We don't know how many students started school at Tri County today. How many Millis students started, uh, you know, this week or next week today? Um, the number of the 
based on the construction costs, uh, you know, and that how the how the costs divide out between approved cost um, of the plan. I mean, the plan is is done. They they know what they want to build. Um, the numbers that I have heard, and these are not to be taken to the bank, are approximately three hundred seventy five to four hundred dollars per household per year for a 20 year bond or 30 year bond? Uh, either 30 or 35. 35. <clears throat> so, you know, even that is, that shouldn't be, you know, we need to iron that out just to Mr. Crone's point in terms of the analysis that needs to be done. Um, we don't have to make a decision on our position tonight. Um, we have some time, and I think we would definitely be informed, better informed, if we waited until, at least until after the tri board. Um, I, I am of the position that we should take a position, um, given that there doesn't appear to be, uh, notwithstanding some objection to it, but also that there's no known kind of risk in doing that. Um, so um, I am anxious to hear what everybody else feels. Um, Ms. Boyardi. Thank you, Chair. Um, if we do do an inform, uh, informational evening for the townspeople, um, I think it would be very, very beneficial for having our Millis rep, Jane Harden, come along with Mr. Mushnick, who works there. I was, it was the first time I'd ever heard of him. I didn't know Jeff had a brother and didn't know he was at Tri-County. Um, that doesn't much matter, but it, he was very informative, and she had asked him, I think that if we can get as many people who have a real grasp on what's going on, um, it would be beneficial. Um, and I do, I think, I agree with the chair that we should have what we feel is the, uh, would be the decision to be made, you know, whether we were in favor of it or not. Um, I think that the, uh, we may be warrant warrant folk, but I think we have a a large command of respect from the public to know that we're here for them, and um, I don't want them thinking all of a sudden we're not here for them. So I think that if we could give our wholehearted our what we as a board feel would be beneficial. I have a few questions to the town administrator. <clears throat> uh, will either or both of these items that are on the ballot be considered at town meeting? Uh, uh, yes or no. Uh, the um, ballot question from Tri-County would not be okay. at town meeting, but a debt exclusion would. If the debt exclusion was approved um, at the ballot box, if that goes forward, um, and the project is approved, then there would be a warrant article on the fall town meeting connected to that debt exclusion. So it, for at least that, the finance committee would consider that if it's a warrant article. Mm -hmm. And also, um, do you know the amount of the debt exclusion now? Uh, I know that, oh, no, no I, I mean, don't have. I mean, much, how much it's going to exactly cost Exactly for Millis? No, I don't have that this evening. And actually, um, as the chair said, there's a range, and it would be an estimated range year to year based on enrollment. So that's part of the problem as well. If it's not a debt exclusion, one year the assessment could be 400000 the next year it could be 600000 So we don't know, and that's all based on enrollment, so we don't know year to year, so we'd be making big moves in our operational budget in order to address that. So we might have cuts one year, locally in order to cover that increase so but we would have some ranges to put out in writing certainly before any debt exclusion goes to the ballot um, we would put some estimates out there based on the numbers that we've been provided by tri-county but again we couldn't there's no way we could say to the dollar what they would be each year it would literally just be based on this estimation of enrollment this is what it would be You'd have to assume an enrollment number in order to do that. I think Kathy has more. Um, so there's not a debt exclusion to build to build the project. No, there's no funding for the project currently. 
that's what the debt solution would be. To right, fund it. right. It'd be, and it'd then be a it funding plan. Year to year right. So basically, what the debt exclusion would say is to fund the assessment associated with this project, Millis's share of the annual assessment. It wouldn't be an exact number. It would be the number would be included in the you know the, the total cost of the project. But we again, there's no way for any town to say exactly what the year-to-year -year cost is going to be would because be they don't know. Would it be the prorated formula? Yes. Of yes. Total project cost divided by our share of based on enrollment. Of enrollment on a year-to-year -year basis divided by. Yes. So I mean, it you could figure it out exactly year to year, but you can't you can't estimate it because you don't know what your enrollment so is going to be. So through the chair, it would be a debt exclusion each year. No, one debt, one debt exclusion. But the debt exclusion would basically say for Millis's share of, of the local assessment for this project. For, for this year. For, for the year. It's well, for the, for the entire length. So it's one debt exclusion vote, but every year it'll, it'll show up in the assessment from Tri-County as to what that is based on the enrollment. So again, we, we, we couldn't tell you exactly what that number is because we don't know what the enrollment's going to be. We don't know if the enrollment five years from now is going to be 20 or 100. Mm -hmm. We don't know. It's until the project's completed. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, and even then, every year, it changes every year. It's not like it locks in for 35, 30 years. It's every year when that, when that enrollment changes, the, the year's assessment, which you think it is actually the fairest way to do it, but it's also the most unpredictable way to, to manage it. And we all need to keep in mind that, that if the ballot measure of the construction passes amongst all of the 11 communities. It's happening. It's happening whether we have a debt exclusion or right. not. And we will pay our share. We will be required to pay the assessment. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, Joyce. Uh, no, go right ahead and I will. I hold, hold on one second. Oh, Kathy, do you have oh, any? If you, um, Mr. Chair, if, have you had any informal discussions with the other towns, Mr. Wazinski, regarding the sense of the town, whether the votes are there, or I know there's some big, big towns involved. Yes. Um, the sense I get from the majority of the towns is that it is likely to pass. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Boyardi was next in line. No problem. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. Please, Ms. Thank Boyardi. Thank you. So um, I think the other thing that we would need to do, and it was something that Sarah brought up, because I, my eyes were opened the, the evening that you asked Mr. Mershnick about the fields, because we don't have fields and you know, there are certain things that we don't have. Um, I think it would be very in, in, informative to find out what sources Millis can use, um, such as the fields, because, uh, or any other thing over there because I think that if we're best informed on that then there might not be as much resistance and maybe there are things that we won't have to spend on our own at our own homeland if we're able to use their homeland certainly it's a worthwhile conversation I encourage it if people are interested in those things to find out what other benefits the municipality might get from the project right Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Underhill. Um, Mr. Chair, back, back to your earlier point. I think if this committee does consider and give a recommendation, we should separate the two items. We should separate the school authorization and the funding as two separate votes. Because we could recommend no for the school, but yes for the two and a half or whatever funding override. Because to go otherwise, if the school doesn't pass, and the override becomes moot, right? Um, and that is really the safest way for Millis to move forward with that because if the school does pass and we don't do an override, that funding's coming out of our operational budget. Uh, so I think we should se consider them separately. Uh, I uh, tend to agree with you and I just think whatever we do needs to be very thoughtful in the sense that we're providing a good, educated, and informed opinion. Um, so. Thank you. Um, any more questions, comments? Um, I do not want to vote on this tonight, um, mainly because um, Jody's not here, um, and uh, we ought to have uh, full attendance on a vote like this. So, can I ask a uh, question? What Certainly, would we be voting on. We would be voting on whether to take an opinion. Okay. Whether to make an opinion. Opinion. Yeah. Okay. We'll likely do that. Uh, unless there's any change of heart or uh, information that comes to light uh, after the tri-board and our, our next meeting after the tri-board. Um, 
and then after that, you know, then there's some work that has to be done again, uh, whether we form a subcommittee or a small working group um, to draft actual language, and then if we need to discuss the language, um, you know, for publishing. That's how I that's how I envision no, it. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not I, I get that, and, and Mr. Chair, I would just say, it should be incumbent upon the the select a board to hold a public meeting in town, mm -hmm. just like the uh, Council on Aging did when we were discussing whether or not to build um, the Council on Aging Center. There should be a town-wide meeting um, to discuss all of the particulars of this because I, the, the public is not informed at all. And if we're not going to have this at a town meeting where there's going to be discussion and things of that nature, then, you know, um, it, it really doesn't help the town. It doesn't help the project. I know that. But, you know, somebody looks at $250 million for a school and they're going to say no. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree with you that the, the town is not as well informed as it should be for a project of this size coming down the road. And, and I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. I'm just saying right. that that's the reality yeah. right now. And that's, and that's something that certainly starting at, you know, you've had some discussions here, but starting the tri-board meeting next week and then the select board meeting after that, there'll be some more in-depth discussions about this issue and mapping out once they once a decision is made as to the path then mapping out you know how to convey information to the public should should begin in earnest after that okay mr lore and then we'll wrap it up yeah. um not to go down the rabbit hole but i will a little bit um so if um if it doesn't pass the school doesn't pass then it's status quo it does pass and then we go into the debt exclusion discussion what I'd like to see um, for a public meeting an informational night whatever it might be it, are what are the different scenarios that the town is going to go through to make decisions is that going to be an increase in taxes is it going to be a cut of budgets across the board is it where are the funds going to be coming from and I know that you can't answer that right now yeah. It's very hard to say I know. because the impact of this is about three years away. Um, so we certainly would start, if we ran to a scenario where I think it's hard to say, you know, this is where the cuts would be three years in advance. I mean, I, I, under, I understand where you're coming from and it kind of makes it more real to do that, but I don't know if we in good faith could do that. We, we would certainly say that if there was another, not another form of funding or some manna from heaven coming down um, for other funding, sure. then there would be, have to be some operational adjustments um, that would be, that have an impact. Um, and, but it's certainly worthy of the discussion. Um, but I don't know if we could put anything in writing to really clearly outline that this far in advance. And, and I think it might be a little disingenuous trying to look three years out in advance as to what our revenues will be three years from now. Um, but it's certainly worthy of the discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Gazinski. Um, you can stay there if you'd like. We may or may not need you for our next uh, portion of our discussion. So the FY25 budget discussion um, topic is fairly premature, I would say. Um, but given a number of um, trains that are coming down the tracks, um, you know, I, I don't much like much like the outreach that is needed for the Tri-County School, um, and and the more discussion we have on it, I think the better it is. More people will not that there's a wide viewing audience here, but uh, I I think we we know that more needs to be done, and I feel frankly more needs to be done on some some of the big rocks that are coming that need to be lifted uh, for FY25 that we've talked about, and especially during uh, the last year. Um, and some of those include um, um, things that we know are approximately another $900,000 school shortfall for FY25. Um, that was discussed during FY24. Um, we knew when the town voted at town meeting that any mechanisms, funding mechanisms and appropriations that were voted in FY24 were essentially temporary um, and that the, the shortfall is still there. Um, in addition to that, 
gets compounded a, a little bit in the sense that we also voted to transfer stabilization money uh, in the amount of four hundred thousand dollars. With uh, you know, and policy dictates that we fund that back over three years. So that's a that's a basically a coming bill that will need to be paid. Um, there are other projects that we know we know of, and that includes the uh, our own high school project, whether that's a, a renovation or an ad uh, or just a, a repair project to the to the critical systems, the bones of the school, uh, whether that be HVAC and roof, um, that still remains to be seen. And the timeline on that uh, is much further out, luckily. Um, it, it, it's there is a bill coming for sure, um, but if if a larger project is is elected or, or voted for, that could be as far out as six years, but it could be less um, if the if the project is not a, a full uh, addition renovate. Uh, so that's a, a bill that's going to come due at some point. Uh, we just talked about Tri County, so I won't uh, belabor that. Um, we do know that there is drop off or uh, a kind of a sunsetting of the uh, the marijuana host community impact uh, funding, which um, you know we'll have to get more details on that um, in terms of what falls off when. Um, that is a lesser of lesser significance in terms of dollar value of some of the figures that we're talking about, but there are some critical positions or some. I won't use that term. There's varying levels of importance of the positions, whether they be critical or important uh, positions that if they are to be maintained, if the, if the service that is being funded through host community impact funds is to be maintained, that will have to come out of the operating budget within the next uh, you know, couple of years. Um, so those are, and there's more. I'm sure there is more. Uh, my intent behind having this discussion uh, was for us potentially to consider um, issuing budget uh, intent and a memo for whomever wants to read it, um, what we would like to see as a finance committee rather than being on the tail end, solely on the tail end of the budget discussion that will take place for operating budget likely December, January timeframe. Um, so, if, if there is agreement potentially, and again, this doesn't need to be voted tonight, it's going to take more work, but I could envision us I issuing intent for everybody to see, including the select board, including the uh, school committee, that we would like to see before an override, before we go right into a, an override discussion for FY25, that budget cuts are examined and they are considered in earnest um, across the board um, from the top down and whether we issue a, a percent um, that the goal should be to eliminate or cut, reduce a certain portion of the budget, um, whatever that X percent is that we issue that guidance and I th there's work to be done uh, to figure out what makes sense. If we issue guidance that any new requests for funding that our desire potentially, again, I'm not trying to be presumptive, I'm just trying to kind of throw this out there for a framework for us to discuss and consider. Um, but along those lines that we would issue guidance that the FinCom, the Finance Committee's potential intent would be that there be no new positions added unless there is a cut commensurate with the new, the new funding or the new request for funding. If, if a department absolutely has to have uh, an FTE for some unknown requirement, then there has to be a commensurate uh, equivalent or as close to equivalent cut out of an expense or a personnel line that, that tough decisions would have to be made. Um, no new growth, you know, potentially. You'd have a net zero um, budget for, um, that you would offset for any new positions. Potentially no new capital spending. Um, I know capital spending or, or uh, capital projects uh, don't necessarily, if they're coming out, if they're being funded via free cash, they don't necessarily flow from year to year. But we've all, we all know that we've 
um, been forced to use free cash for budget items over the last you know couple years where it's been um, most of many people um, including select board including people in this committee are, have been reluctant to do that um, for instance cuts to um, or, or free cash that's migrated its way to offset sped funding last year that's an example there's been police officers that um, that have been funded via free cash and then picked up through new growth or um, another funding source um, at the next budget at the at the second half of the budget cycle um, those are examples I would say that any an option would be that there be no uh, capital spending unless it is an absolutely critical project or need equipment need that um, has to be funded or something else fails uh, i.e. no new no nice to haves you know something has to be failing and then that money either gets earmarked for or saved for I mean for instance it could get put back into stabilization we know that that's a bill that's coming um, and I suspect that this is not I, I know because I've had the discussion with a select board member and a school committee member uh, first off I know that they are sensitive to us telling them what to do or even um, you know putting this is their process there's nothing that prevents us from putting some guidance out there for what we would like to see and and essentially forecasting on what we would support in a vote why go in my opinion why go through multiple iterations where our intent as a committee is not considered while while building the budget versus doing that later say next February March um, you know why not do it up front is my opinion um, I don't think that this is a novel opinion for many people um, you know making decisions for the town whether it be the select board or well the town makes its own decisions but in terms of crafting the budget I don't think this is novel information that I've you know proposals or ideas um, I know that the people that I've spoke to are in somewhat agreement that this will have to happen um, I just don't think we should assume that an override is the tool to bridge the gap, um, in my opinion. And, and nor do I think it should be an all or none that, that every budget deficit or challenge that faces us in FY25 should be the entire amount. Perhaps it's a lesser amount if we can um, really look at the budget in depth and go in with the go in with the philosophy that we're going to reduce um, and look at things that are that we're capable of reducing um, th that's I'm not saying it's easy um, we know that the school budget for instance is a huge percentage of personnel dollars and has just made cuts um, seven uh, seven FTEs um, they know that if they don't receive more funding which by the way they did not there was no additional supplemental at least nothing of, of any type of significance well um, I will I'm, I'm just to touch upon that briefly it's my understanding that there was um, a special education one-time circuit breaker that was put through at 75 million dollars but it didn't make the final cut it got pretty far down the road it may be considered at a at, at a supplemental state supplemental budget in the fall no guarantees on that um, just as an update, I will tell you that, because <clears throat> I don't know if I met with you since the governor signed the budget, but the, the net increase <clears throat> in local aid from FY23 to FY24 was a total of $16,202, or 0.26%. So when you look at the inflation numbers, you look at the difficulty in hiring and retaining staff because of really you're competing for staff um, wages are going up in, in the private sector or have been quite a bit in order to track certain types of staff towns have been struggling with that and when you have a, a total of 0.2 per six two six percent increase in local aid that's that's not going to do it so that every year is an additional burden shifted to the local taxpayer and away from the state I gave back that three billion <laughs> So the, the huge amount of money, additional money in um, school aid did not come to mill us. We are one of the 119 minimum aid communities that receive $60 per student. 
Um, and a lot of that was offset by cherry sheet offsets that that ate up a lot of a lot of that gain, even though that total gain was only like forty, fifty thousand dollars. It wasn't a great deal of money. Um, so I'm eager to hear your thoughts on whether we, in the coming weeks and months, that we do that. Um, you know, that we issue some guidance, some intent, um, or just a budget memo to the effect of, you know, broadcasting or forecasting what we would like to see in a budget. It doesn't mean that a budget that doesn't do that won't get supported. It, it would just give our intent. And, and again, not making light of, they're all difficult decisions, especially cuts. There's nothing, I would say, more difficult where you're making than making personnel cuts. Um, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense to put forth a budget that forecasts a, an override as the going in position to solve our, our challenges for FY25. There ought to be a real hard look as to what we can, how can we um, fine tune our budget so that that's as little, so this is as little of an impact to the taxpayer as possible. So I'll, I'll stop talking. Hello, Mr. Mr. Crum. I, I agree with you, I, and I think we, we kind of set that uh, mark with the school committee last year. We don't want to look at the school committee budget in March. Mm -hmm. We should be having a discussion about the school committee budget and town budgets starting in November and really taking a, a long look at it as opposed to here's the budget, it's 72 pages, and you figure it out. So I agree 100%. Uh, we should be requesting the various boards to come in to us and give us projections of where they are. They do. They know what the numbers are going to be. It's not magic. Um, we have what we've gotten for, for, for state finances right now. We don't anticipate any major changes in that. So I agree with you. I think we should start inviting them in and asking them for these budgets ahead of time or their proposed budgets ahead of time so we can review them and give them our advice. I agree. Right. It's being proactive rather than reactive, and we can actually strategize if we know these things. I didn't know you could get them in advance, so if we can, I would support getting them as soon as we know they have them. Well, we won't get FY25 okay. budgets. No, but, we if can, we, but if we, we can predict and project, right? Sort of, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think we'll, I think that's an uphill, um, you know, walk for sure to it's get that, true. but that's not to say that we can't uh, get expense data through FY24 to know where they are. Um, and I'm not looking, they're not looking for help and I'm not really looking to help them with their budget. Again, I'm trying not to play, uh, uh, you know, reactive, um, doing, performing our role, our obligation to advise. I don't wanna be reactive. Um, there's nothing wrong with giving them some guidance. And I'm not taking away, I had this, exact discussion with a select board member, we're not taking away their prerogative to put forth the budget that they want. They can read and heed, or they can ignore, or something in the middle. It's, that's their prerogative. We're not stepping on anybody else's role or, or responsibility by saying this is what we would like to see. And, and I don't think asking for preliminary budgets in November is a strain. They've got to give it to us by January or February. That's only a few months later. So I, I think preliminary budgets, let us get some, you know, get some work done on those, looking at them, asking questions and things like that. I, I don't, you know, if they refuse, okay, they refuse. But what's that going to say? Right. Right. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. McGinnis. I, I dare say that the finance director would actually know a lot of the FY25 budget already like it's 90% personnel. You know what your steps are, your lanes and everything. I mean, so it kind of starts like what Mr. Crone said a few me a, a while ago. Just start with those people and kind of work your way down. They wouldn't know capital expenses yet or what they need, vehicles, whatnot. But surely there's a baseline that you go with every year. And um, I just want to mention that years ago it was always the the, com the departments presented level funding and then through the town administrator, the decisions were made about it to present to the school committee. But, okay, I got other questions about other tri-board matters that I'd like to see brought up. Don't, 
I'm not, nobody, not everybody has to speak. I'm just making sure I don't miss anybody before I move on, so. Okay, um, so given that, and again, Jody's not here, not looking to vote on this, but this will be an ongoing uh, agenda item um, going forward that, and perhaps could evoke some tri-county, or excuse me, some tri-board discussion. Probably not, I hope not, because um, I'd rather us come up with our position before we, um, you know, discuss it with an open um, discussion amongst the three uh, committees or boards. So, uh, but in our future meetings, our regular meetings, I anticipate that this would be up for discussion and, and we would have something to uh, provide by say, uh, end of October. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. Um, moving yes. on. Uh, our next agenda item is uh, tri board meeting topics. Um, right off the bat, we know that the tri county uh, will to get the, the construction and the referendum or the, the other ballot measure on the override will get discussed extensively. Um, if there are other topics that you all would like, uh, happy to discuss them or I need an email from you um, tomorrow by noon and then at that point it's up to my discretion as to whether I include it on the agenda um, so you know we can discuss it now or you can fire fire me an email um, individually not to the whole uh, committee um, if you would Ms. Mr. Chair thank you um, First off, on the um, host community agreement, I think the governor signed this S3096 that states you cannot mandate a certain percentage, quote, of gross sales, and it must reasonably be related. So it's not saying that the host community agreement is canceled. Um, That's correct. And, I, and I've seen a lot of um, towns get opinions from, I saw Foley Hoag wrote to a few of their towns uh, law firm, uh, what this entailed and what they can and can't do. And I, I believe the owner of the business uh, has the priority to determine whether they're essential uh, expenses. So I, I think we should find out what is happening with that because the way I read it, and maybe the town administrator can uh, educate me more, is that um, it's, it's not void, it's not over. Please. Chairman, Go ahead. Um, so I would agree with that. Um, I would add to that that, you know, we've taken the position among many of the communities that that most recent bill um, should be should go from the day of its passage forward and should not be retroactive. Mm -hmm. The contracts that were negotiated in good faith well before this most recent legislation that changed that. We do have a certain. Um, contract statutes within the state constitution that they cannot violate a current contract. So that's the position the town is taking. Um, so really we're looking at it from, you know, we're in a five year host community agreement. We're really entering in, you know, into the fall, we'll be entering into the fifth year Thank of you. that agreement. So, um, I, yes, so next year we're gonna have to look at how we're going to adjust to the change in those funds. But for the town, we feel that the most recent legislation would really only affect future agreements and not ones that we've already executed. But certainly we can talk about that a little bit at the, at the tri-board meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it, it is chaos out there in the world of HCAs and the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, I think the messaging has been very mixed and confused. And I think the public is um, understandably very confused about the status of this uh, because I don't think the state has really determined how they're going to manage this law. And, and the regulations that the Cannabis Control Commission recently put out, um, I think, still have a lot of vagueness to them. Um, so, uh, again, I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect our current agreement. So it's more of an issue that it's just we're hitting that five-year point more than anything else for, for the town of Mills. So after five years, is through the chair again, is this agreement null and void? It ends after five years. The state does allow uh, a total of up to three year, uh, uh, three up to eight years of host community agreements. 
Um, but that would be a new, any, anything else would, would be a new agreement, and that would be subject to discussion going forward. And it would be under the new rules, which still haven't been codified yet. So I couldn't say how that would, how that would roll out. But it, there, the host agreement has not been deemed null and void after it expires. There is a chance that there will be funds available. Well, we, yeah, the funds come in, and we mm -hmm. have a reserve of funds, so right. it, they don't disappear immediately. But no, the, I'm talking for the through the chair. I'm talking about the next contract that expires. I think July 1st is the next contract coming up. Well, we have a contract that's five years, and it's, it it's goes going to go through through this year. Okay. Um, after that, yeah. there are a lot of questions okay. as, as to moving forward. But from the from the um, viewpoint of our current HCA, we are looking at you know how the town would move forward without those funds because really it's the the the, con the original agreement is a five-year agreement I think it's so the the potential for a topic is twofold it's what are we going what is the town going to do or what is the select board going to propose for off-ramping of those services if nothing if if the contract terminates if and when the contract terminates and then the second part of that is what's next and and so that we can have some insight for budget implications if if there's the ability to negotiate a new agreement you know is it three years is it what are, what's the percentage what's the potential revenue that type of thing it's the second order discussion you know, I think there's two topics that um, town administration needs to be prepared to discuss at uh, the tribal board and I think I think we'll have some of those answers. Sure. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll lay yeah. out some of those concerns and what we're working on. I would not say we'll have all those answers understand. at the I meeting totally next understand. week. Yep. Um, the meeting I notice in the host community agreement, Mr. Chair, that uh, there are two positions for the police department funding. Are those positions uh, funding uh, stated in their union contract? Which positions are you um, referencing? Marijuana training, it's called. I didn't know if there All was right. a blurb in their contract that said uh, there must be funded you, uh, marijuana training, even if I it expires. Not, I do not believe, I'd have to go check that okay. again, but I do not Appreciate believe that. that the training provision is in their contract. The marijuana stipend is in their contract, mm -hmm. so that would the town would be required to continue to pay that. Um, with or without the HCA funds coming in, I think that... I don't have the form right in front of me, but I think it was around twelve thousand dollars a year, approximately. But the training is total not or total or per officer. A oh, total. total. About <laughs> twelve thousand for FY twenty four. Yeah. So, um, but the uh, the training I do not believe is a contractual obligation. That'll be something that I'd be discussing with the chief as to how we would um, move forward uh, on that type of training. And if I could just mention something, I'm, I'm glad the town administrator is here. Um, at the uh, l last, the June uh, school committee meeting, the, um, the school committee member who resigned stated that the schools are spending thirty-five thousand dollars for the Munis system, and they're not getting they're not getting anything out of it for their full potential, and. Um, I, the t I didn't give the, the town hasn't had a chance to respond to that statement and I've heard other things and I I just hope at the tri board that there'll be an opportunity for um, the select board to respond to that because it made it sound like that the school is wasting thirty five thousand dollars back to the town on a shared service that isn't shared mr. chair that's all I'd like to find out about that and also, can um, there be some discussion regarding the regionalization report that was for police and fire dispatchers, and perhaps some more discussion regarding regionalization of services? And also, Mr. Chair, if I could um, request the status of the senior center, things down the road. And also, if anyone would ever consider that the town administrator participate in the school union contracts. And that's it for me. Thank you.
those are potentials. I, I've wrote, written them all down. Sarah? Um, just because we were talking about the fact that the school may already know what their circuit breaker funding additional is going to be for FY25, what their, maybe if they're starting discussions on what their plan's going to be with the potential shortfall coming up next year. I know a lot of people were complaining and concerned about not finding out about the shortfall until the last minute and wanted to know when did the school board know, when did they you know, start connecting with the state. Um, and I just think it would be nice to know what their plan is moving forward since they have enough time to discuss maybe alternate funding or contacting the state. Um, just so we know what their plan is. Uh, I agree. I understand your question. I have posed the question. Um, they do not currently possess that data, but I, so lacking that data, I would ask them to provide us a timeline of when do we, when do pieces of the puzzle, when do we know, when do we get the unknowns that they don't currently have, mm -hmm. um, so that we can have the discussion we were previously talking about as to when can we expect to have um, a draft budget, a notional budget, yeah. so that we can talk about it? So, okay. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Chair. Ms. Boyardi. If it's fair to ask, just as Mr. Crone said about the school committee getting us their budget, so that we're not caught like we were this past year. Um, there was information known last October about the increase, the 14% increase, and we, it was kind of kept quiet. And I, I, I take issue with that description of it, but you're right. It was known in October. It wasn't, I don't think it was kept quiet. We discussed it at the tri board, so other than not, putting it on a billboard. Okay, other than, I, I, you're right. I correct myself. It was not kept quiet. It was brought up, but yeah. nothing was done about it. Um, in my humble opinion, that it was, it will get fixed, it will get fixed, it will get fixed. And I don't want that to happen this year. Okay. Um, I, I would hope that there would be more transparency with the school committee um, as far as what they do and don't have. Okay. I'm um, sure I'm going to get things said to me, but that's okay. You can handle it. I can um, handle it. If there's, so if there's any more topics, please just email me. Can and, I just uh, mention something, Mr. Chair? Certainly. Our policy states that agenda items should be received, uh, the data that supports agenda items should be received 48 hours prior that's to... A, that's not accurate. Uh, section 10.1c, 48 hours available to the committee, to the committee. I don't believe that's accurate. Okay. Well, I, let me just, we can look at it afterwards. Okay. And then also, can I request that, and I think a few others, hard copies especially like of the school budget that wasn't of it. They didn't have the staff to Xerox it last year like they had for many years before that. If um, we could take a, a tally of who, I know a lot of you folks read everything on your computer, but I don't. Unless there's anything else, we're going to move on. Um, we have to approve some bills payable, Deirdre. Uh, yes, it's for the um, Association of Downtown Financial Committee. Mr. Underhill. Hmm? Mr. Chair. Mr. Underhill. I move that we vote to approve f to the sum of $190 for our membership for the Association of Town Finance Committees. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee vote to approve $900, excuse me, $190 to, for dues and subscription fees for Association of Town Finance Committees uh, discussion. There is a handout describing the uh, 
a little bit of the what goes on at the finance committee, the Association of Town Finance Committees, and their upcoming conferences. Uh, we will endeavor to send reps to those conferences. If you are interested in volunteering, uh, please let me know. Uh, any Morning. further discussion? November 3rd. I'd be interested, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any further discussion? None heard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion passes unanimously. I'm just going to pass this around. If you could please sign. Send it back so I get the other half. Okay, Deidre, I'll leave that on top of the cabinet in the corner. Um, we have Finance Committee meeting minutes for July 12th. Chairman, I move that the minutes be accepted. Second. Been moved and seconded that the minutes be accepted uh, as written. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 One abstention from Mr. Underhill, Deirdre. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. I think that covers it. I appreciate um, your discussion and inputs. We will have our meeting in here next week for the Tri Board, and then uh, we likely will um, ramp up the frequency of our meetings um, to discuss some of the business that likely will come out of the Tri Board as well as the topics that we discussed tonight. So I would anticipate that um, end of September, October, we'll start going weekly. Um, you know, other other committees' inputs and um, their documents and and uh, items uh, could dictate differently. But and then real quick, um, how I understand you guys are already meeting. The capital planning committee has already had like a five-hour marathon meeting last week. Uh, five minutes. Uh, <laughs> I heard it was five hours. Yeah. Maybe. Just our meetings are five yeah. hours. That's not true. <laughs> it felt like it, right, John? <laughs> <laughs> felt like it. Well, you just you were just yeah. told you know there's no capital unless an enterprise exactly. is paying for it. No, we voted on uh, prior minutes uh, from our prior discussions, um, and the updated spreadsheet was sent out. And we're waiting from the town administrator to see what the capital requests are for this uh, time of year. Okay. That's it. Okay. When do you? When is your next meeting? Thirteenth, actually. Okay. All right. I don't know. We're not scheduled to meet uh, that day. We will not, no. If we were to meet, it would be on the 14th. 13th is a Tuesday. Am I right? Uh, no, it's not. It's a Wednesday. So yeah. You're right. So, but right now, we don't have a big copy scheduled for that day. No. That's right. But please let them know that Wednesday is ours and not to schedule any <laughs> meetings on Wednesdays. <laughs> Try. Okay. okay. They used to always, they've always honored that in the past. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll take a motion. I move to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Did, um, did the signature?